Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. For those who are joining us live in our sanctuary audience and those who are joining us online, we thank you for joining us Facebook and YouTube. Uh, those here today, if you will please stand as you are able, and we'll begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in, your in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, but at this time I'll ask our young people to come forward. We haven't done this in a little while, have we? Come up for kind of children's sermon, children's time. We're moving into a very special time of the year. Does anybody know what that special time of the year is? You don't know? You do know? You don't know? Well, today is a very special day that marks kind of a transition, right? It wasn't too long ago that we had like a big tree right here, right? Remember that? Christmas seemed like it was just yesterday almost. But now we're moving into another part of the year. Does anybody know what part of the year we're moving into? Sometimes it's associated with an Easter bunny. No? Easter, yeah. But before we get to Easter, 
Yeah, we have St. Patrick's Day too. We, we're getting through our holidays, right? Yeah, we have all, and don't forget daylight savings time or turn the clocks forward is coming too. That's the one that parents hate the most, right? Um, yeah, but we have all these holidays coming up and today is a big one for us. So I'm wearing white today, right? Um, today is the Transfiguration Day or Transfiguration Sunday where Jesus goes up on a mountain and he's glowing, dazzling white clothes and his disciples are like, whoa, what's going on here? But it marks kind of the beginning of moving into a season of Lent. And in the season of Lent, it's a time where it seems like we get a little bit sadder, right? We kind of pray, we're called to pray a lot. We're called to fast a lot. That means that we maybe don't eat chocolate or we maybe exercise a little bit more. Maybe we act a little bit nicer to our friends at school or maybe we act a lot nicer to our brothers and sisters, right? Um, but it's a time that we try to reconnect with God in, in lots of ways. And one of the things that we do as part of our tradition is you'll notice that today will be the last day that we'll sing Alleluia. And we'll put those Alleluias away until, guess what day we bring out the Alleluias again? Yeah, Easter. That's when we shout Alleluia because Alleluia is a really good thing. It's like we're really happy, right? But we kind of get a little bit sad sometimes during Lent because that's when Jesus goes into Jerusalem and, well, he's crucified and died and buried, but he rises from the dead. And that's when we celebrate for Easter. And we get a glimpse of that on Transfiguration Sunday, which is today, okay? And so we'll go to Sunday school and you'll learn a little bit about uh, these things, right? But before we do that, we're going to pray. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for showing us your light and your love uh, through Jesus. We ask that you continue to uh, light the way for our, our young people and their teachers to lead them and guide them in your way of, of truth and of love and of forgiveness. We ask that you continue to walk with them during uh, all of the seasons of the year to lead them and guide them, inspire them, and fill them with your love and grace. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, and we'll see you when you return. The first reading is from Exodus 34, 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he had come down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking to, with God. When Aaron and the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and he was afraid to come near him. But Moses called them, and, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and, gave him, and he gave them the commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a, put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out he to and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went up to speak with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 3, 12 through 4. Since then, we have such hope, we act with the boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But in their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear of the re hear the reading of the old covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whoever Moses is read, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. 
but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord through reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since this is, since it's by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that once hide, that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we command ourselves to the con mm. conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him, they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met, met him. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. And Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And while he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Liberator, Jesus the Christ. Pray with me, please. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in you, your sight, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Whenever I'm out in the sun, you know, I don't apply enough sunscreen, right? I end up looking like Moses come down the mountain with the 15, 
the Ten Commandments. I turn bright red and my face feels like it's on fire for about a day or two. Anybody else have that same experience? And so when someone mentions that it looks like I got a little bit of sun, when they really mean a lot of sun, and that my face is all red, I just tell them that I just got back from going up the mountain to talk with God. <laughs> Interacting with the divine can be transformative and sometimes transfigurative experience. For Moses and for Jesus, their experiences on the mountain physically change them, but they aren't the only ones who are supposed to be transformed by their experience. The transfiguration of Jesus takes place on the eighth day, or eight days after Jesus had called upon his disciples to take up their cross and to follow him. The early Christians were convinced that God's creative activity extended beyond the seven-day week. And so the first day, Sunday, was also the eighth day of God's work. So their dedication of Sunday for gathering and for worship grew out of post-resurrection appearance, appearances of the Lord in glory. And here in the transfiguration story, we get a sneak peek of the Lord in glory. In the transfiguration of Jesus, we see many parallels and connections to Moses who went up on the mountain to receive instructions from God for all the people. We see Elijah who also had a mountaintop experience. And Jesus converses with them on the mountaintop. But Luke gives us more information than the other Gospels. Luke tells us what Jesus, Moses, and Elijah were discussing. And it was the disciples that went with him, Peter, John, and James, who were tired, but they were still able to eavesdrop on their conversation. They heard them talking about Jesus' departure in Jerusalem. In Greek, the word used for departure is Exodus, like the name of the second book of the Hebrew Scriptures in our first reading for today. And we may wonder if the Exodus that they're talking about is Jesus' death or his resurrection or his ascension. Or maybe it's in reference to all three since each of these events took place in and or around Jerusalem. But I think for us it's easy to get stuck on the transfiguration of Jesus, that we forget who ultimately is supposed to be transformed by this story. The disciples and us as followers of the way of Jesus today. Moses and Elijah are and were important figures in the Hebrew scriptures because they were God's messengers to the people. They were called on to proclaim a message of redemption and salvation from tyranny and oppression. God, through Moses, rescued and delivered the Hebrew people from the bonds of Egypt. And later, Moses received the covenant on a mountain when God promised to be the Israelites' God and that they would be God's faithful people. And God, through Moses, gave the people the law or instructions on how to live in right relationship with God and how to live in right relationship with one another. And the people had a responsibility to follow the law of God, the way of the Lord. Elijah was God's prophet who spoke to the people to keep them on the straight and narrow. And just as God had warned the people to listen to Moses and to listen to Elijah and the prophets, now the voice of God speaks to Peter and John and James and to us. This is my son, my chosen. And in an exclamation, God speaks to us saying, listen to him. Jesus had just finished some long and difficult teachings. Jesus had already taught them about the blessings and the woes during the Sermon on the Plain. Jesus had taught his disciples to take up their cross, not their swords, but their crosses and follow him. 
It is immediately after this experience on the mountain that Jesus goes back down with these three disciples to meet the crowds of people below. And Jesus continued to heal people of their sickness and ailments because suffering in the world hadn't magically ended. Diseases hadn't ended. War hadn't ended. The sins of this world hadn't yet been defeated. And notice that when Jesus gets down the mountain, he becomes, metaphorically speaking, red in the face. Jesus lets his anger and his frustration out. Jesus says when confronted by someone who needs his son healed, Jesus lashes out. You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you. Jesus often went to the mountains to talk to God and maybe to get away from the sins and evils of this world. Moses went up the mountain to get away from a stiff-necked people, the Hebrew scriptures remind us. Elijah fled to get away from angry rulers trying to kill him. But they were only getting away to get refilled, recharged, and reanimated by God. To get reanimated by God, to go back down the mountain, to teach the people, to heal the people in body, mind, and spirit. They were sent back down the mountain to confront the crowds, the throngs of people who were hurting and suffering and needing guidance and direction. They were sent back down to those who needed healing, wholeness, and compassion, And it can be quite frustrating when you come down the mountain and you see a people worshiping a golden calf, can it? It can be overwhelming to see that there are still so many people hurting and suffering while the ones you put in charge to heal the sick aren't quite getting the job done. It can make one's blood boil over with anger and frustration to see people harming one another, exploiting one another, and at war with one another. It can make a person turn red in the face. But St. Augustine reminds us that hope has two daughters. The first daughter is anger. Anger at the the way the world is. Unjust, unfair, unequal. We can be angry. We can be red in the face at the pain and suffering caused by injustice and inequality and suffering and pain. We can be angry at the wars being waged throughout the world. But we're reminded that hope has a second daughter named courage. It is the courage to change the world to the way that it ought to be. A world full of compassion, love, grace, and peace. What Luke is trying to do in this gospel is to convince the followers of Jesus and all future followers of Jesus, his disciples and us, to listen to Jesus, to follow his teachings, to take up our cross and follow. And that it's okay to get angry at the situations, but also have the courage and faith to overcome what the world throws at us through love and grace. As Christians today, we find ourselves struggling to listen to Jesus, or better yet, to follow the teachings of Jesus, to love one another and to care for one another. We're no different or better than our biblical ancestors who had ignored the law and the prophets so many times. As we gather this morning for worship and to pray, I think we're all aware that there are nations at war with one another yet again. And this week I got reminded of a traditional Cossack folk song from way back in the day. For those who aren't familiar with the Cossacks, they're a group of people from Russia, the Ukraine, and other Slavic countries. Part of my mom's ancestors are Cossacks of Ukrainian origin. My mom had a photo of her father in a Cossack uniform for an Eastern European Heritage Day as he rode on horseback. 
You see, my Eastern European ancestors came to the United States in the 1880s and had settled in a part of Pennsylvania that is still some of the highest percentage of people with Ukrainian ancestry. I digress a little. But this old Cossack folk song that made its way into a book by a Russian novelist, Mikhail Sholokhov, called And Quiet Flows the Dawn. And there was a certain blacklisted American folk singer who had been reading the English translation of the book on his way to perform at a college in October of 1955, when he came across part of the book that contained a song. And the English translation of that folk song are, and where are the reeds? Where are the flowers? The girls gather them all. And what of these girls? The girls went and got wed. And what of the Cossacks? They have gone to the war. The blacklisted folk singer, Pete Seeger, focused on those last few lines to create, where have all the flowers gone? Where have all the flowers gone, long time passing? Where have all the flowers gone, long time ago? Where have all the flowers gone? The girls have picked them, every one. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? The song ends, or maybe it doesn't end, with the flowers covering the graves of the soldiers who went off to war. And then another generation of young girls picking the flowers while the cycle repeats itself. And then Pete Seeger ended his version of the song, When Will We Ever Learn? When Will We Ever Learn? When will we listen to Jesus? When will we break the cycles of fear and violence and oppression and war? When will we listen to Jesus and learn that love, God's redeeming and transformative love, can overcome evil in this world? Even Jesus got a little red in the face, wondering how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? And yet Jesus still comes down to bear with us. Jesus still is present with us, enduring with us, through everything that we go through as a human civilization. But we need to listen, and we need to do our part. So let us bear with one another and endure with one another as well. And let us pray and work for peace and justice throughout the earth. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by the ocean tides. God of grace. You love justice and establish equality. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with the gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace. Those who heal, oh, heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop as the, uh, this week as we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who are prepared uh, and lead us in worship during this change in, of season, pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to worship life, God of grace. Blessed are those who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbors.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings. You guide us on our journey. Prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our announcements for this week. There is a special congregational meeting, uh, and I do see some people with uh, mittens and gloves and scarves, so I think you are well aware of what we'll be talking about uh, and voting on. Um, so heating um, in the, uh, the sanctuary here, so please uh, stick around for that, uh, and I'm sure we'll get a, a, a bunch of people voting, we want heat, right? <laughs> However that happens, we want heat, right? Because um, these buildings can, can get mighty cold, even in a nice warm climate like Southern California. Uh, so stick around for that. Like we mentioned in the children's sermon, Lent is upon us, and Ash Wednesday will be this coming Wednesday, and we'll be having an in-person uh, live worship service, also uh, via Facebook, YouTube as well, for those who are unable to attend. Uh, but we will have our traditional Ash Wednesday service 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, so please join us for that. Uh, we will be doing some daily Lenten devotions uh, online, uh, just like we did with our Advent devotions. We'll be recording and posting those, and you can see those online. And to do that as part of your, your Lenten discipline, as we invite people uh, to the di many disciplines of Lent, uh, we will be using the Grace Unbounded uh, from Augsburg Fortress, which you can get a um, copy either through Augsburg Fortress or on Amazon. There's also the Kindle edition, which I think is $1.99 or 99 cents, um, but r fairly uh, inexpensive. If you have the Kindle app, you can use that as well. Adult Bible study will continue Thursdays at 7. We're going to be staying in the Gospel of Luke, but for the Lenten season, we're going to be looking at a, a series of parables. So each week, we're going to be focusing on a different parable. Uh, so you can just jump on in with us uh, and join us if you haven't been uh, joining us before uh, for the uh, Bible study. And there's a Zoom link for that that you can find online uh, or via the, the web portal, uh, the portal that we send out as well. Um, February Caring Loose Offering Collection this month is for ELCA World Hunger. Uh, so please contribute to that as well. And I think those are my announcements or our announcements for today. Does anyone have anything else that I forgot? Missing. Um, there is one other thing. I think uh, I sent out an email earlier in the week um, or on Friday, I think it was, we sent one out. Uh, we did have a break-in at the church earlier this week. Uh, some glass was broken, some doors were broken, and some things were kind of shuffled around. Um, but uh, we've begun cleaning up uh, and just inviting people to, uh, to pray for the person who had done this, uh, as well as uh, those of us who um, kind of going through that, that sense of having space violated. Um, and also the challenge for us, how can we continue to, to operate with open hearts, open minds, and open doors? Uh, to allow people that might be in some kind of pain or struggling or suffering um, to also receive some help and some care. And so how do we get motivated through um, the compassion that you know, Jesus has for us uh, to also extend that compassion and love and grace uh, as well? And so I just wanted to uh, uh, acknowledge that um, as well. Seeing no other announcements, please stand and receive the blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, 
Bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Share the good news.